I'm not handing over anything! Oh, Jesus Christ! That? Ah. You don't know what you're up against. The whole place is coming down. That's a pretty damn good idea. So with the new Resident Evil 2 remake just around the corner, I think this is the best time to recap and summarize the story that happens before the new RE2 remake, covering both Resident Evil 0 and Resident Evil 1, where we follow the tragic fates of the Star's Alpha and Bravo team, as they discover the many horrifying truths that the Umbrella Corporation has done during these events. Anyways, what is up you guys, this is Heydeva, and in this video, we'll do a quick rundown of the events that happens right before the new Resident Evil 2 remake, as we follow our characters from Rebecca Chambers of Resident Evil 0 to Chris Redfield in Resident Evil 1, as they unveil the truth behind the many horrifying horrifying experiments that the Umbrella Corporation has conducted, which eventually leads to the Raccoon City incident and how it sets up the story for our protagonist in the new RE2 remake. So starting off, let's do a quick rundown on the lore that happens before the mansion incident and how the T-Virus was discovered and created. So originally, the progenitor virus was found in a secret underground garden in Africa, with a prominent progenitor RNA sample stemming from a flower which they called the Stairway to the Sun. So with the newfound discovery of the base template of the progenitor virus, the Umbrella Corporation extracted the samples from these flowers and started started their research and development into the bioorganic weapons, or BOWs, in order to both create a powerful new life form that could be used for military purposes like the tyrant, and their goals of eugenics which was to enhance the capabilities of the human population. How can they survive underground? These are no ordinary flowers. But it wasn't until Dr. James Marcus was able to finally cultivate the progenitor virus into the widely known T-Virus by combining the progenitor virus with leech DNA. This resulted into the breakthrough that would be the base sample of the T-Virus. But unfortunately for the renowned doctor, he would be assassinated by the Umbrella operatives. With the Umbrella Security Services sent to execute Dr. Marcus by his fellow colleague Dr. Oswald E. Spencer due to the increasing rift between the two once friends. By the end of the assassination, we get a quick glimpse of Albert Wesker and Dr. William Birkin standing above the dying Marcus, with William stating that he would take over Dr. Marcus's research and having the corpse of Dr. Marcus thrown out. But unbeknownst to everyone, the queen leech that Dr. Marcus was experimenting on went inside the dead doctor, where in there, it incubated for years until it gave Dr. James Marcus his new life. I live. Now I will have my revenge on Umbrella. And the world will burn in an inferno of hate! With this new Queen Leech, or Dr. Marks Reborn, now having set his goals of revenge against Umbrella, causing the T-Virus outbreak in the Umbrella training facility and in the Arkley Spencer mansion, which then he would follow up with the release of its leeches on the Ecliptic Express, an Umbrella train full of Umbrella passengers on board. causing everyone inside to die horrible deaths and will lead to their eventual zombification. But with these events, Star's Bravo team was sent to investigate some bizarre murders that's been going on in the suburbs of Raccoon City, without them knowing that they're about to face their worst nightmare. With this, the story of Resident Evil Zero starts, featuring the young Rebecca Chambers as one of our protagonists. With the other members of Star's Bravo team alongside her, they start their investigation in the Arklay Forest, until Rebecca eventually finds the ruined Umbrella train, the Ecliptic Express. But once in the train, this would lead us players to follow Rebecca in her journey, fighting off the countless monsters throughout this prequel Resident Evil title. With her eventual partnership with the framed criminal, Billy Cohen, they both traverse throughout their train, trying to find a way to stop it from its tracks, where they both fight off countless monsters, including Cerberus, a giant scorpion, and even a zombified Fallen Stars member, Edward. Don't come any closer! 
but by the end of their travels in the train, they finally hit a detour after crashing into the Umbrella Trading Facility, where there, similar as to the mansion incident, both Billy and Rebecca make their way throughout the facility while fighting off the many monsters inside. But as they proceed with their journey, we come to find out that Billy was innocent of the 24 murders that he was charged, which he explained to Rebecca after saving her life. Anyways, as they continue to move on in their quest of survival, we have the reborn Dr. Marcus, or Queen Leech, surveying them from afar, sending monsters to eliminate them. Your friends no longer amuse me. Good riddance. Now nothing will stop me from getting my revenge. All the while having both Albert Wesker and William Birkin plotting the events that would lead to the mansion incident in Resident Evil 1, where Wesker states that he would lead the Star's Alpha team into the mansion in order to gather and record some combat data from their fights against the many BOWs that lurk inside the Spencer Mansion. Do as you wish. I will follow my initial plan and lure the Star's members into the mansion. Their superior combat training should make them perfect test subjects. <laughs> while William stays behind to continue his research into the more powerful G-Virus, which was a mutagenic strain derived from the countless illegal and unethical experimentations of Lisa Trevor, but I'll get to that later in the video. But by the end of Resident Evil Zero, both Billy and Rebecca have fought against some very powerful BLWs, including the Proto-Tyrant. With this tyrant being the base template for Umbrella's later iterations of this monster, seeing a sample of what a BLW can do. Seeing Rebecca come face to face with this monster at the Umbrella Secret Lab, to a second encounter in the disposal plant area, but this time, we have both Billy and Rebecca fighting this tyrant together. So if you guys want a quick rundown on the tyrants in the early Resident Evil series, please feel free to check out the video on my channel. I'll leave a card in the top right section of your screen so you guys can check it out. Anyways, back on topic, we finally get to see the face-to-face -face encounter with the Queen Leech, explaining the events that happened 10 years ago, which I explained earlier in this video, where we found out about Dr. James Marcus' assassination due to Spencer. But as we finally see the conclusion of the exposition from the reborn Dr. Marcus, he proceeds to mutate and finally shows his true form. showcasing his grotesque leech-like body, contorting in many abnormal ways, without any resemblance to any human features that he once had. But with the ensuing battle, both Rebecca and Billy fight off the Queen Leech two times, as it follows our protagonists as they try to escape the facility. but it's not until the Queen Leech has finally taken enough damage that we finally get to see Billy take this monster out for good. Hey, Queenie! Feast on this! After the escape, both Billy and Rebecca have to now part ways due to the circumstances of their situation, with Rebecca needing to head towards the Spencer Mansion to follow and find the remaining Stars members, and in Billy's situation where now he has to continue his hiding from imprisonment due to the alleged murders that he's committed. We then see both protagonists part ways, which in the end explains how Rebecca was found in the Spencer Mansion and as to why Bravo Team was decimated by the monsters that they had to fight in Resident Evil Zero. Thank you, Rebecca.
So with the Star's Bravo team missing, we now have Star's Alpha team sent to investigate their whereabouts, but also with the gentle coaxing of the traitors Albert Wesker as well, where we start off the game with Alpha team searching the Bravo team's crashed helicopter. But once found, their fates are no luckier than Bravo teams, because here, we see Alpha team ambushed by the Cerberus monsters, with Joseph meeting his demise against these pack of hounds. Anyway, Star's Alpha team had only one choice, and that was to run towards the Spencer estate to try to seek out shelter, having no idea that they just stumbled upon one of Arbrella's mansions. Like Bravo Team, here we have Star's Alpha Team decimated by the many monsters that lurk inside the mansion as well. Where we see Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine face off against the Crimson Head Zombies, a giant snake called Yawn, and even a giant infected shark called Neptune. But as they make their way throughout the mansion in its maze-like setting, we find some of the dead bodies of the other Star's members, which included the iconic first encounter with a zombie in Resident Evil 1, as he was devouring one of the Star's Bravo Team's members. Anyway, similar to the travels in Resident Evil Zero, we find Chris fighting against the many more hordes of monsters that lurk inside the mansion, including Lisa Trevor, the daughter of George Trevor, who was the architect that designed the Spencer estate. Like I mentioned earlier, Lisa Trevor was unethically experimented on by Umbrella for many years, after both her and her mother Jessica Trevor were held against their will and were given sample shots of the T-Virus. This would cause the subsequent experimentation of Lisa due to her tolerance of the virus, which would cause her to be deformed and lose a large portion of her cognitive ability but this would catch the eye of Umbrella, which would have her receive a sample of the any parasite, which was supposed to help her enhance her cognitive function that she had lost due to the experimentations. Though implanted with the any parasite, it didn't seem to work on Lisa, stating that her body was too toxic of an environment for the parasite, which had Dr. William Bergen investigate further into the occurrence. But what he found was that Lisa's body took the DNA of the any parasite and assimilated it with her strain of the virus DNA in her body, which resulted in the creation of the G-Virus, which then William would take a sample from her and start the conduction of his research into the more powerful virus, leading to the events that would happen in Resident Evil 2. Anyways, going back to Resident Evil 1, we still follow either Chris or Jill as they make their way throughout the mansion, until they find out that there was a traitor amongst the Star's Alpha unit. This was exemplified when Enrico from Star's Bravo team was murdered, right before he was about to say who the traitor was. Crosser. Enrico, wait. <laughs> Enrico! Um, Rel. Enrico! By the end of Resident Evil 1, we find out that it was Wesker all along, and that he had this pre-plan to gather combat data from the Star's members while fighting against the monsters in the Spencer Mansion, all the while showing off Umbrella's powerful creation of the T-00 Tyrant, which was a more refined version of the Proto-Tyrant that we fought in Resident Evil 0. But of course Wesker meets his supposed end by this tyrant when we see it break out of his culture tank and impels the one star's member. So with a tyrant unleashed, it was up to Jill or Chris in Resident Evil 1 to dispose of this monster, seeing them fight it off when they reach the helipad area during their escape. As we see the last remaining Star's member fight off this tyrant, we eventually get to finish it off with the iconic rocket launcher ending. But after their horrifying experience, the last remaining Stars members return to Raccoon City to inform the RPD and Chief Irons of their traumatic experience in the Spencer estate and how Umbrella was conducting illegal experimentations of humans for their T-Virus research. This of course would be shot down by the corrupted Chief Irons, who was in collusion with the Umbrella Corporation and making sure to keeping their illegal activities in Raccoon City a secret. Also, Chief Irons would have Stars disbanded to help neutralize the information that they've discovered. But even with all the obstacles around them, this didn't stop Chris and the other Stars members in 
trying to warn the citizens of Raccoon City of what transpired during Resident Evil 1, which was mentioned by Marvin Brando in the original Resident Evil 2. But to the fall of the many citizens of Raccoon City, and the officers that doubted the surviving members of STARS, having turned a blind eye to the events of Resident Evil 1, this would lead to their eventual deaths and the T-Virus outbreak that would ravage throughout the city. In the end, Chris would seek out the Umbrella headquarters in Europe to help dispose of this evil company once and for all, while Jill stayed behind for a little while longer in Raccoon City, but would later follow her fellow STARS comrade. So with the events of both Resident Evil 0 and Resident Evil 1, we discover the creation of both the T and G virus, the mansion incident, and the countless monsters that would later haunt the citizens of Raccoon City, setting up the tragic events that would happen in the new Resident Evil 2 remake, where we both follow Leon Kennedy and Claire Redfield as they make their way into the now infested city. But with the new Resident Evil 2 remake coming out in a couple of days, we the players again get to delve into the world of survival horror. Seeing how far the Resident Evil series has come to this point of its life, from as many different titles and iterations, to as many iconic monsters and the memorable characters and soundtracks. We again get to experience this new Resident Evil 2 remake title in a whole new light, taking in some of the best aspects from the original Resident Evil 2, where we saw Mr. X follow the player throughout our journey in this game, which was similar to Nemesis in Resident Evil 3, or having a crazed lunatic like Chief Irons, which is comparable to the psychopathic Alfred Ashford of Resident Evil Code Veronica. Because from all the footages and gameplay that we've seen so far in this new Resident Evil 2 remake, we the players are in for an instant classic in the making, where we finally see the culmination of the many Resident Evil games that has come out throughout the years to finally bringing us the epitome of what a true survival horror game should be. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching my quick rundown of the story before Resident Evil 2 Remake video. Also, if you guys enjoyed the content, please feel free to like and subscribe. Also, let me know in the comments section down below what you guys expect from this new remake and what you guys are most excited about in this new Resident Evil title. Again, thank you guys so much and as always, you guys have a great rest of your day and this is Hey Deva signing out.